this sermon is part one of two on obedience and the certainty of God's words. Let's start by reading about this particular commandment that God gave the children of Israel, which will set the platform for the rest of this presentation and the subsequent presentation to follow. This is what God said in Deuteronomy chapter 17, reading from verse 14. When thou art come unto the land, which Jehovah thy God giveth thee, and shall possess it, and shall dwell therein, and shall say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom Jehovah thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shall thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. But he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to the end that he should multiply horses. For as much as Jehovah had said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. And it shall be with him and he shall read therein all the days of his life that he may learn to fear Jehovah his God to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren and that he turn at aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom he and his children in the midst of Israel so this is a clear commandment that was given by God to the kings that would arise in Israel. This presentation is another reminder of the importance of obedience to every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Because the Bible declares in Isaiah 40 verse 8 that the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Viewers, God's words are true and can be trusted because God means what he says and he says what he means. In the scripture reading of Deuteronomy chapter 17, and centuries before it even happened, God foretold that Israel would ask for a king. And we can read about the fulfillment in 1 Samuel chapter 8. And we'll read about this, 1 Samuel chapter 8. Let's read about the fulfillment of what God told the children of Israel all the way back in Deuteronomy. It is entitled, Israel Demands a King. And it came to pass, when Samuel was old, that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second, Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after Luca, and took bribes, and perverted judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together, and came to Samuel unto Ramah. And said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. That is exactly what God told the children of Israel that they would do. And here we are seeing the fulfillment. Verse 6 tells us this. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto Jehovah. And Jehovah said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, they have rejected me that I should reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, where they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore, hearken unto their voice, how be it? Yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of king that shall reign over them. And this is the warning concerning a king. And Samuel told all the words of Jehovah unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, this will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen. And some shall run before his chariots. And he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties. And will set them to ear his ground and to reap his harvest 
and to make his instruments of war and instruments of his chariots. And he will take your daughters to be confectionaries and to be cooks and to be bakers. And he will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. And he will take the tenth of your seed and of your vineyards and give to his officers and to his servants. And he will take your men servants and your maid servants and your goodliest young men and your asses and put them to his work. He will take the tenth of your sheep and ye shall be his servants. And ye shall cry out in that day because of your king, which ye shall have chosen you. And Jehovah will not hear you in that day. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, nay, but we will have a king over us that we also may be like all the nations and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people and rehearsed them in the ears of Jehovah. And Jehovah said to Samuel, hearken unto their voice and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, go ye every man unto his city. Here, Israel demanded a king and God hearkened unto their request. But God told them ahead of time what manner of kings they will have. But even then, the people still decided that they wanted to be like all the other nations around them. So God's words are true. God can be trusted. His words are certain and they are sure. So God gave, in our scripture reading of Deuteronomy 17, God gave specific instructions as to how these kings were to conduct themselves by stating in clear terms what they should and should not do. However, human history has shown us that from the fall of Adam, mankind has had a propensity to disobey the expressed command of God. Deuteronomy 17 was chosen as a scripture reading because it will lay the groundwork and set the foundation for what God is going to say to us today through his words. This sermon, viewers, is intended to bring into sharp focus the need for all of us to obey a clear, thus saith Jehovah. God's words ought to be obeyed at all times, not just sometimes, and as we all should know by now, disobeying an expressed command of God will always result in disastrous consequences. Adam lost his dominion, and King Saul lost his throne because of disobedience. Let's highlight and emphasize a few things from the scripture reading that God instructed the kings of Israel not to do. One, the king was not to multiply horses to himself. Two, neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. And three, neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. Instructions were clear. God also instructed the kings to do something very important so that their hearts be not lifted up above their brethren. One, the king shall write himself a copy of this law in a book in his own hand so that it is legible. And two, the king shall read it all the days of his life. Why? So that he may learn to fear Jehovah, his God, to keep all the words of this law and that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left. We all have the tendency to disobey the word of God. And this was also evident in the life of King Solomon, a man blessed and beloved of his God, according to Nehemiah 13, verse 26. Viewers, Solomon disobeyed all three instructions that God outlined in Deuteronomy 17, verse 14 to 20, because he multiplied horses to himself and even sent his servants to Egypt to get them, something that God had forbidden the kings to do. 1 Kings 10, verse 26 and verse 28 tells us that Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt and he had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen whom he bestowed in the cities for chariots. We can all do the math just to ascertain the number of horses that Solomon possessed. Solomon also greatly multiplied to himself gold and silver, something God instructed him not to do. The Bible tells us that King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches, 1 Kings 10, verse 23, because the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 600 
three score and six talents of gold, according to 1 Kings 10, verse 14. Note, keenly viewers, the weight of gold that is mentioned, 666 talents of gold. That number should ring a bell. It is the number of the beast. And it's no coincidence that the next chapter of the Bible, 1 Kings chapter 11, outlined the downward spiral of Solomon's reign as king. Solomon was not only rich in gold, but in silver as well, because the Bible again tells us that the king made silver to be in Jerusalem as stones, and cedars made he to be as the sycamore trees that are in the veil for abundance. 1 Kings 10 verse 27. Solomon, as we know, disobeyed the clear command of God not to multiply wives to himself. That his heart turned not away, and this in particular signaled the beginning of the end of Solomon's reign as king of Israel. In fact, in his latter years, Solomon became the wisest fool, as can be seen in 1 Kings chapter 11, reading from verse 1. Notice what we are told in scripture. So having spoken about the glories of Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 10. The next chapter, 1 Kings chapter 11, starts by using a conjunction. But, which changes the emphasis of what is going to happen to Solomon. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians and Ittites, of the nations concerning which Jehovah said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely, notice the word, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. And verse 3 tells us this, and he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines and his wives turned away his heart. So that's a total of 1,000 women. What is one man doing with 1,000 women? Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines, something that God told him not to do, to multiply wives unto themselves so that their hearts were not turned away from him. Solomon disobeyed God in all three areas. Verse 4 tells us this, for it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with Jehovah his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of Jehovah and went not fully after Jehovah as did David his father. Notice what Solomon did. Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and unto Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. Viewers, the Bible tells us in 1 Kings 11, verse 9 to 10, that Jehovah was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from Jehovah, God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which Jehovah commanded. And we can read about this in 1 Kings 9, reading from verse 1 to 9. 1 Kings 9, verse 1 to 9. 1 Kings 9, reading from verse 1 to 9. God's promise and warning. And it came to pass, when Solomon had finished the building of the house of Jehovah, and the king's house, and all Solomon's desire, which he was pleased to do, that Jehovah, God, appeared to Solomon the second time, as he had appeared unto him at Gibeon. And Jehovah said, Unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou madest before me. I have hallowed this house, that's the temple, which thou hast built, to put my name there forever, and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. And notice what God went on to say. And if God always used 
that two letter word. And if thou will walk before me as David thy father and walk in integrity of heart and in uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded thee and will keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever. As I promised to David thy father saying, there shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. But if ye shall at all turn from following me, ye are your children and will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them. Then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them. And this house, which I have hallowed for my name, will I cast out of my sight. And Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. And at this house, which is high, everyone that passeth by, it shall be astonished and shall hiss. And they shall say, why hath Jehovah done thus unto this land and to this house? And they shall answer, because they forsook Jehovah their God, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt and have taken hold upon, upon other gods and have worshipped them and served them. Therefore hath Jehovah brought upon them all this evil. And we notice from scripture that the house that Solomon had built was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar because of the sins of Solomon and his descendants, the kings of Judah. So everything that God warned Solomon about, Solomon forgot and he went and he served other gods because of his wives. God had told him not to multiply wives unto yourselves because they shall turn away your heart from serving me. And so said, so done. Solomon's wives caused him to build high places for, their, for the worship of their gods. And this caused Solomon to lose the kingdom as we shall see in this sermon presentation. So when we disobey God, there will always be consequences. And as a result of Solomon's sin and disobedience, God pronounced judgment. This is what was pronounced in 1 Kings 11, verse 11 to 13, when God said this unto Solomon. And I quote, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes which I have commanded thee, I will surely, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee and will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding, in thy days I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Howbeit, I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son for David my servant's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. End of quote. I want us to take careful note of every time that God uses the word surely because it means that it will certainly happen. There is finality and no appeal will be granted. Again, viewers, God means what he says and says exactly what he means. God told Solomon that the kingdom will be taken from him and given to his servant. That servant was Jeroboam. Who was Jeroboam? According to 1 Kings 11 verse 26, Jeroboam was the son of Nebat, an Ephratite of Zereda, Solomon's servant, whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow. The Bible also tells us that Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor, and Solomon, seeing the young man that he was industrious, made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph. 1 Kings 11 verse 28. It was Jeroboam that Jehovah, the Lord, would give Solomon's kingdom. So God sent his prophet Ahijah with a message to Jeroboam to inform him of God's plan for his life. This can be found in 1 Kings 11. So let's read about it and pay keen attention to the word of Jehovah. 1 Kings chapter 11, reading from verse 29. And it came to pass at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem that the prophet Ahijah, the Shilonite, found him in the way. And he had clad himself with a new garment and they too were alone in the field. And Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him and rent it in 12 pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, take thee 10 
pieces for thus saith Jehovah, the God of Israel. Behold, I will rent the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and will give 10 tribes to thee. And he adds a parenthetical statement, but he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Why? Because they have forsaken me and have worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways to do that which is right in mine eyes, and to keep my statutes and my judgments as did David his father. Howbeit, I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him a prince all the days of his life, for David my servant's sake, whom I chose, because he kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand and will give it unto thee, even ten tribes. And unto his son will I give one tribe that David my servant may have a light all the way before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen me to put my name there. And I will take thee and thou shalt reign according to all that thy soul desireth and shall be king over Israel. And it shall be if thou wilt hearken unto all that I command thee, and wilt walk in my ways, and to do that is right in my sight, to keep my statutes and my commandments as David my servant did, that I will be with thee and build thee a sure house as I built for David, and will give Israel unto thee. So he was, God was very clear in his pronouncements to Jeroboam and told him what would happen if the son of Nebat was obedient to him. Due to Solomon's sin against the Lord, God raised up adversaries against him, and even Jeroboam lifted up his hand against the king, according to 1 Kings 11, verse 26. As a result of that, Solomon sought to kill Jeroboam, who had to flee into Egypt until the death of Solomon, 1 Kings 11, verse 26. There is always certainty in the word of God. And immediately after Solomon's death, the once united kingdom of Israel was divided because the people who suffered under the heavy yoke of Solomon wanted some ease under his son Rehoboam. The people of Israel had one simple request, which they made to the king. And this can be found in 1 Kings 12, verse 4. This is what the people said to Rehoboam, Solomon's son. Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now, therefore, make thou the grievous service of thy father and his heavy yoke, which he put upon us, lighter, and we will serve thee. The scriptures tell us that Rehoboam took counsel from his father's advisors, as well as the young men that grew up with him, and came away with bad advice, because he ignored the wise counsel of the old men. And this is what he told the people in 1 Kings 12, verse 14. And I quote, this is Rehoboam speaking to the people. My father made your yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. My father also chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. End of quote. What a word to deliver to your loyal subjects who made one simple request. Ease up off the taxation which your father have put upon us and we will serve thee. But instead of acceding to the request of the people, Rehoboam answered the people harshly. And as a result, the kingdom of Israel was divided. And notice what he said, my father taxed you heavily, I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. The Bible then tells us that the king hearkened not unto the people, for the cause was from Jehovah, that he might perform his saying, which Jehovah spake by Hijah, the Shilonite, unto Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, 1 Kings 12, verse 15. As a result of the king's answer to the people, Israel rebelled against Jeroboam and the house of David. Therefore, they sent and called for Jeroboam and made him king over all Israel, 1 Kings 12, verse 20. Only the tribe of Judah remained loyal to Rehoboam, just as God had declared. Again, 
God's words can always be trusted because his words are truth. This sermon is an obedience and the certainty of God's words. Rehoboam, in an attempt to regain control of his lost kingdom, was now preparing to fight against his rebelling subjects, but God had to intervene. The Bible tells us in 1 Kings 12, verse 22 to 24, that the word of God came unto Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and unto all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Thus saith Jehovah, Ye shall not go up, nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Return every man to his house, for this thing is from me. So the people listened and obeyed the word of God. As a result of divine intervention, Israel was now divided into two separate kingdoms. Jeroboam became ruler of the northern kingdom of Israel, consisting of 10 tribes, while Rehoboam reigned over the southern kingdom of Judah along with the tribe of Benjamin. This was a direct fulfillment of Ahijah's prophecy to Jeroboam in 1 Kings 11, verse 29 to 38, which you read earlier. Viewers, with that said, the stage is now set to look at another story that will demonstrate the need for all of us to trust and obey the word of God. However, this will be continued in the next presentation entitled The Disobedient Prophet. So, so far, we saw where, as a result of Solomon's disobedience, he lost control over all Israel. But because of David, his father's sake, God told him that he would not strip him of the entire kingdom, but he will take it from his son. And we just read earlier that when Rehoboam ascended the throne as king of Israel, God fulfilled his word which he spoke to Jeroboam. And he took 10 tribes out of the 12 and gave them to Jeroboam and left Rehoboam with the tribe of Judah and Benjamin who aligned themselves with Judah. So in the next presentation, we will continue the story of Jeroboam's reign and what he did in his reign. And again, we will see plainly from the word of God that God's words can be trusted. God says what he means and he means what he says. And God expects us as his human subjects to be obedient to his every command. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned to the next presentation, which is entitled The Disobedient Prophet, as we look at the life and legacy of Jeroboam, king of Israel.